shout out to the 12 lost tribes of the nation of Israel for scattered abroad greetings on the festival of the Shabbat day. Hakaha, 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 wa yala yaba ha shama asha, shalawama, wa ala, meaning peace be unto you. So, brothers and sisters, let's go into our subject of today for our spiritual education, not only the salvation of Mahasha, but all the brothers and sisters who are scattered abroad all across the world and in the spoiled areas. Let's go into our Bible subject today. Today we're going to talk about two nations. It's important to us in the prophecy. Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau. Their destinies written in the scriptures. Let's go to our opening scripture today to show you who's in charge. Who is running this planet, the nations, and all things that's happening. Let's go into the Bible. Acts chapter 15, verse 18. Let's go, people. Let's go to Acts chapter 15, verse 18. What is written in there? The plans of the Most High Yahweh, the Tazar Wabalaya, the congregation, and the Tazar Yahweh, the Most High Yahweh's plans for the Tazar why follow Yah for the congregation of Israel, the 12 tribes? What does he want us to know? Here it is. Acts 15, 18 says this, people. Known unto Yahweh all his works from the beginning of the world. Y'all hear that? You see what's going on today? Ain't nothing going on. You know, he used to say that all the time, Elder Yaquan. He said, ain't nothing going wrong on the planet Earth, people. He said, everything is going on according to the plans of who? Of the Most High. Mm -hmm. The Tazah La Yama, meaning of the Most High Yahweh. So these things that we see going on today, and unfortunately we lost 10 of our people, and we're going to be losing a lot more of our people in these last days. As we told y'all, judgment is going to start at the house of Yahweh first, and if it started at us, what about the ungodly and the other ones of the earth and the world and the nations? What's going to happen to them? So there's going to be destruction and death. So we have to comfort you with the scriptures and show you why is this going on. The subject is, why does Esau hate his brother Jacob? Now, I was online the other day, and I saw some very disturbing posts. That's why I tell you, brothers and sisters, don't go online. Looking for the truth. You better go to your elders. You got the spirit and the knowledge. Because they had a brother dressed up as Esau. A Jake. So these lies of the Catholicism, the Roman church, and the Renaissance, flipping everything upside down, changing the color of Yahweh and the people of Israel, is still here today. So this is part of the conspiracies that's out here. And no lies, what? Of the truth, people. So as we move on in here, we see known unto Yahweh all his works in the beginning of the world. So Yahweh got plans in this Bible. The counsel of the Most High is going to stand. And we got men out here with devices. Go to Proverbs. I don't care what they say. I go by what the scriptures say. Mm -hmm. This is what Yahweh says in the scriptures. So we got to go by the counsel of the Bible because man got this in his heart. You know what you got in this heart? Philosophies. I think. I think it should be like this. I think it should be like that. See what the Lord Yahweh says. In Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21, it is written, people. There are many devices in a man's heart. You see? That's why we got all these world religions out here. Arabs made up Islam. Chinese made up Buddhism. Mm -hmm. So forth and so on and so on. And the Israelites are in their own beliefs and their own ways. But Yahweh says, my works are known from the beginning of the world. See what it says here? Nevertheless, the counsel of Yahweh, that shall stand. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the counsel. You know what the counsel is? Right here. Let's go to the counsel of the Most High. What did the Most High tell us in the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 21? Let's go back to the beginning. Beginning of these two nations here, these two boys, Jacob and Esau. Let's go to Genesis 
chapter 25. This was during the time of Isaac and Rebekah. These two nations were going to be born on this earth, and they were going to bring forth two sons to bring forth their destinies in the Most High's works. Jacob, the father of the twelve tribes, the third father of the promise, and Esau, the so-called white man. Esau is not the Arabs. Esau is not a white man. Esau is the so-called white man. All so-called white people come out of Edom. In Hebrew, they were known in the Bible as Esau is Abakar, Harry, and Edom is Gabaya. That's what we call them. In in uh, called Jacob. See, and we're gonna show you these two nations and who are they today and what the most high fans say he got for them. Not what man says. It's not go by man's device. Genesis 25, 21 says this. This is a breakdown of it. And Isaac entreated your hour for his wife because she was barren, meaning she couldn't have no baby. She wasn't pregnant at the time. And how was entreated of him and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. Back then, they used to go to the seers. And he was wondering why she couldn't have a baby. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it's so, why am I thus? Oh, here we go right here. <laughs> Rebecca, his wife, conceived. So she finally conceived when they went to the, to the Most High and found out. Then the Most High let her get pregnant. And the children struggled, struggled together within her. And, and she said, if you're so, why am I thus? And she went and cried the Lord. So the seer told her. And Yahweh said unto her, two nations. Y'all hear that? Two nations are in thy womb. And two men or people shall be separated from thy bowels. These two boys are going to be separated from the womb and from the bowels of Isaac and Rebekah. And these two boys are two different nations. And let's find out who they are and the characteristics. And it says, and one people shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. Remember that. You gonna have one that's going to be stronger, one going to be weaker. But the elder going to serve the younger. And when that day to be delivered and fulfilled, behold, there were twins in no womb. Because they were twins, that don't mean they were exactly the same. Right. It was two nations in a womb. Esau hitched a ride in a black woman and black man's testicles and womb. A lot of people say, well, why the tribes of Israel look the way they do? How can a Negro make a Mexican or a Panamanian? Because you come out the spirit world and the most high forms you in the womb to make you who you are. He made all nations and made their ways diverse. He made Israel. And out of Israel, you got the 12 tribes, a speckled bird, tall, short, Brown, dark brown, woolly hair, straight hair, nappy hair. Mm -hmm. That's how we look. Indian is so-called, and, and, and Indian and, and Negro descent, so-called. That's what they call us. But we were called Madaba Yasha Allah, Hebrew Israelites in the Bible, according to these records. And our people came out that way because the Lord made us this way. Be proud of how you look and your heritage. See what it says here? Genesis 25, 21, and it says here, on verse 23. Two nations are in the womb, and two men of people shall be separated from thy body. So these two boys are going to come out, and they're going to be separate, and they're going to be different from each other. See what it says here? And the one people shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when the days will be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red. You know what that word red means in Hebrew? Gabaya. So when he came out, <laughs> they said, go buy up. Mm -hmm. He was red. They said, go buy up. What's wrong with him? Why everybody else was brown? Mm -hmm. This is the first white man on the so-called planet. Right. Huh. It wasn't a so-called black man. These brothers are teaching that you a bunch of liars. Mm -hmm. Esau came out. Red. The word red means Gabaya in Hebrew. So when he came out, they recorded it. They said, Gabaya! He's red. And what? All over like a hairy garment. Hairy means 
Esau or Adam. <laughs> That's why we call them Edomites. Edomites. Red, Tobiah, Esau, Harry. Look at them. All white people, red and hairy, look at them. They got hair all over their back, mm -hmm. running down there. Look at even this illustration. Oh. This guy that drew this picture, this guy got hair all over his back. Jacob was a smooth man with a real afro, mm -hmm. brown skin brother. Mm -hmm. That was our father. And he broke the tips. This guy was a man who will show you his characteristics. And they called his name Esau. And after that came out his brother out, and his hand took a hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob or Yaquan. Okay. And Isaac was three score, uh, three score years old when she bought him. So why didn't they say anything about Jacob? Because he was not an eyeball. Esau came out with that red color and that hairy hair all over him, and they called him Kabaya. Red. And they said, out of car, Harry. So that name stuck with him. And it says here. And after it came on uh, uh, his brother out. We read that. Uh, this says here. And the boys grew. And Esau was a what? And 27, cunning hunter. Check it out. Mm -hmm. Who hunts deers? Who hunted all the buffaloes and killed them all? Mm -hmm. Who hunts bears? Esau. Who climbs a mountain? and shoots a damn animal and he falls off the damn mountain and he take them and put them on his back and crawl down the mountain and eat them these white so-called people yeah. a man of the field meaning he likes to hunt fish mountain climb ain't that the so-called white man don't they do that today mm -hmm. that's right yeah see a man of the field and jacob was a plain man dwelling in tent so jacob was, was a cool brother <laughs> He wasn't into that. Jacob was in the land, he was in the tents, taking care of his business, farming, see? And Isaac loved Esau because uh, he did eat of his innocence, and Rebecca loved Jacob. So they loved the boys because of their characteristics back then. And Jacob saw pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was sent. And Esau said unto Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with this same red pottage. Therefore, uh, for I faint. Therefore, his name was called Edom. See? And that word Edom means what? To buy your red. And Jacob said, sell me this day your birthright. This is the problem in the so-called churches. Why did he sell his birthright? I'm going to show you why Esau sold his birthright. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point of death. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? You hear that? In ancient times, who received the heritage from the father? sons. If you were a king, you had a son, your son was supposed to be the prince, raise him up to be like you, to take over when you die, he becomes a new king. That was practiced all in the east with all men. This guy Esau said, what? What profit is it that the birthright do for me? He was like, I don't care about no birthright. See? And Jacob said, swear to me in this day, and he swear to him. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. You hear that? Mm -hmm. Tell these Christians to stop teaching lies. Mm -hmm. That's right. This man came out red and hairy. He didn't care about no birthright. Care about. What kind of spirit was that? We're going to show you what kind of spirit it is. And Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage and lentils. And then he eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. You hear that? Now let's go to the time of the apostles. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. New Testament time. Hebrews. The apostles wrote about this because they had the records. They were Israelites and they knew about Jacob and Esau and they knew the things that were coming. So when these two boys started going, let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. These records were written during the time of Yahushua and the apostles and they said this about the so-called white man. Lest there be any fornicator. What's a fornicator? A sinner. Or a profane person, meaning you don't care about nothing but profit. What did Esau have? That spirit of fornication. And he was a profane person as Esau. Y'all didn't think that was in the Bible, did you? 
the Sunday morning sermons will never teach you this. Who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Mm -hmm. You hear that? That's what the white man is. This man will take millions of acres of land, burn down the forest so he can make money and chop down all the trees. He'll say, I don't care if the ass polluted. it. I want to make money. Mm -hmm. Let's build these cities. So what? The land is polluted. Let the water go into the ocean and then it go out in the sea. Mr. President, the water is polluted and it's going in the air and it's coming down. It's acid rain. He don't give a damn, do he? All he care about is making money. That's what kind of man this is. He's profane. He's a fornicator, which means a sinner. That's what fornication means. He's in all type of bestiality, animals, uh, laying up with all the nations. That's why all these women out here and these other nations got white babies. Because he go all around the world spreading his damn seed in these nations and leaving bastards behind. Like in the time of the Renaissance, the time of bastards. And that's what they got going on in the church today. Bastards and faggots and lesbians and child molesters. And that's where it come from, people. See what it says here? But you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was re what? Rejected. If you get rejected from a job, are you still working there? Are you qualified to keep that job? Hell no, the boss said, hey boy, there's a pencil slip in your mailbox. Why am I being fired? Because you're a fornicator and you're a liar and you're a man of the field and you ain't qualified. So the Most High set this up from the beginning. This man was not made to be the righteous. He was rejected. But he found no place of repentance. Though he saw they kept me with tears. Don't the white men come to y'all? Uh, I'm sorry, we. I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry, Mr. Negro Western and Puerto Rican. I'm sorry we had you to say. Don't they do that emotional crap? Huh? Don't they cry and their kids come to you? I'm sorry they bother you. I'm sorry we took your life. Listen, little white boy. Your ass going in slavery. Okay? Your fathers caused this and you going in here. That's what we tell them when we go out there and speak to them, don't we? I remember I was up there speaking on 44th of Broadway back in the days. And these white people came up, I read Habeka, and said, Woe to you that build up a city with blood. And we brought out documents like this, showing how they killed our people. And these books, the American Holocaust. And you know, a white boy stood there and would listen to him. He, he started crying. And he ran to his father. And his father came over to me. He was like, Can some of us be saved? I uh, said, so Revelations 13, 9 and 10, he that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. All of y'all going to captivity. Your dog, your cat, your rat, your birds, your money is going to be mine. And your wife going to be in my bedchamber. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, please, they got, and they got on their knees. I, and I said, please, get on, get on your knees. That's right, get on your knees. Because the Lord said in the last days, they're going to come to us with supplication saying, please, Israel, don't kill us. It's going to be too late. It's going to be too late because Judgment Day is coming to the USA. And it's fornicated Esau lied. Let's see what happened in Genesis. <laughs> Go to Genesis 27, 38. This is why this happened in Genesis chapter 27, verse 38. The blessings were not for him in the first place. So when he sold his birthright back then, he thought when, when, when Isaac was blessing them that, he, that the Lord forgot what he did. <laughs> Let's go to Genesis 27. Are they kidding? The most I don't forget. He ain't like man. He don't get, he don't get tired. He don't get weary. He got records up there in the heavens and the angels record everything and show it to him. Most high got order up there. Righteous order. Only order. Genesis 27. 38. What it said? Here you go about the blessings what is Jacob and Esau got. And Esau said to his father, Has thou but only one blessing, my father? 
Bless me, even one, O oh my oh father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Because at that time, Jacob had got the blessing. He supplanted him because it was written that he was going to do that anyway. See? And Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Mm. What do you saw got right now? Who got all the oil fields, the industries? Who fished the oceans? Who gets all the mineral resources out of the ground? This man could go out there, tear down mountains, and become a millionaire with gold. We can't do that. That's his blessing. He lives at the fatness of the earth. Where did the atomic bombs come from? Minerals that's inside the earth. And the Lord gave him that knowledge on the left hand side to produce atomic bombs. So this man got all his blessings, carnal blessings, right now on the earth. He runs all the industries, he got all the oil deals and land deals, and he spread himself all over the planet with his military might of him what? And the door of heaven from above. And by the sword shalt thou live. Who got the, the most powerful armies on the planet right now? The United States and Russia. But it depends on how you use your army. Like Russia went in there to Ukraine and it bumbling all over the place. But it's going to turn into the third world's war anyway. But the most high shows you in the Bible, the Americans use their tactics. And when they go and do something, they blow, they blow, every, blow everything up, send in the troops, capture whoever they got to capture, like they did Ben Laden. He laying in the bed with his whore. He woke up, that young white boy, 19 years old, stood over him with a 9 millimeter and blew his damn head off. And they threw his ass in the ocean somewhere for a burial. That's how Esau took the earth. During the time of the Greeks, they had the Phoenix army. During the time of Rome, they had what? The legions. Check it out. This man lives by the sword. See what it says here? And shall serve thy brother. Now, when these two boys came out, remember what it said in Genesis? The elder gonna serve the younger? Right? It shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. What is that talking about? Y'all remember David and Solomon? Hmm? Our forefathers? David and Solomon. When they had the earth, what did they do? Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 8. 2 Kings. Chapter 8. And we're going to start at verse 1. Second Kings, chapter 8. When we came up out of Egypt, Jacob went and formed the nation of Israel to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Esau was dwelling over there in Mount Seir. And he had his destiny to be the Greeks and the Romans. Now it's turned to the brother, our forefather, Jacob. Now, from the time of us coming up out of Egypt, receiving a promised land, David supplanted uh, Saul because he wasn't doing right. Then David came into his kingdom. What was David? He was from the tribe of Judah, of the nation of Israel, and he was going to rule over all the 12 tribes in that kingdom to his son Solomon was born. So that's where we came from, people. And it says this. Uh, then spake Elisha to the woman whose son had uh, restored her uh, 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 second case chapter 8, right? And we're going to start at verse 16. Start at verse 16. Second Kings chapter 8, we're going to start at verse 16. Here you go, right here. Second Kings says this. And in the fifth year of Jericho, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Jehoshaphat being then king of Judah, Jeroboam, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, began to reign. Thirty and two years was he uh, began to reign, and he reigned eight years in, the, in Jerusalem. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel and did the house of uh, Ahab, for the daughter of Ahab was his wife. And he did evil 
and the sand of the Lord. Yet the Lord will not destroy Judah for David his servant's sake. So later on down the road, these brothers were descendants, and they were messing up. And they were kings at that time in, in Jerusalem. And he promised him and, uh, and give him all the light and to his, uh, to his children. In his days, Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah. Y'all hear that? In his days, Edom revolted from the hand of Judah and made a king over themselves. So Joram went over to Zeb and all the chariots with him, and he rose up by night and smote the Edomites which compassed him about, and the captains of the chariots and the people that fled into their tents. Yet Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah until this day. Then Laban revolted after the same time. This is what that prophecy was talking about when he had the dominion. When we had the dominion under David and Solomon and the kings after them, it came a time when the Edomites broke away from us. And when you read in that chapter, they put garrisons in all nations. Israel was ruling all the nations over there at that time. And every nation was subjugated to Israel in their kingdom. This is why we became a kingdom during the time of David and Solomon. And after that, there were kings up to the time of Jeroboam and Moabam over in Israel. And then this is when the Edomites broke off from us. And Esau started his own kingship. They were called in Genesis 36, the Dukes of Edom. Then from that time, they went into the Greeks. And from that time, they went into the Romans. From that time, they went into the Middle Ages. And then they came down to the Spanish, French, and the British, the seven heads on the beast, and to this empire we have now that we're living in today, that we're living in right now. And these people got their blessings in that time. And the Most High said, at that time, we shall be, what? Breaking away. And they, that's what they did. They broke away in that time and, he, and uh, Israel had all these empires and uh, uh, underneath them. And during that time, that's what was, that, that that was a prophecy. Let's go. Let's go to Genesis 27, 28. What kind of blessing did Jacob get? This is why it's important to know your nationality because these things are going to come on us in the last days. Jacob was blessed with what? Let's read it out of the Bible. It says, Therefore, Yahweh give unto thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow to thee. Mm -hmm. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's son bow down unto thee. Cursed is everyone that curseth thee and blessed he that blesseth thee. See that? So this was a blessing that Jacob got. What is Israel going to eventually do under Yahweh Shah? We're going to rule all nations on this planet Earth. When Yahweh Shah returns, he's going to be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's coming back. He's set up as a horn of salvation for the 12 tribes of Israel. They're going to be in New Jerusalem in the Middle East, right here in this land called Canaan, and the whole earth mm -hmm. is going to be ours. That's why Isaiah 60 says that. Isaiah chapter 14 says that. In the book of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10 on down, it says that. And all through the scriptures, we're going to get the new Jerusalem in Revelations 21 and 22, and the 12 gates with the 12 tribes of Israel going to be on there. And our brothers and sisters and our children are going to be up behind them gates in paradise, and we're going to take over this whole earth. Amen. Come. And we're going to have this whole dominion as the Most High's kingdom and the law, like it says in, our, in the book of Malachi, of Micah chapter 4, going to come forth from Jerusalem, 
and from Israel. This is what our heritage is. This is what we're waiting for. So Esau hated that. <laughs> Let's see what he did. Let's go to uh, Genesis 27, 41. What did Esau do when the Most High gave us some blessings? And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessings wherewith his father blessed him. Y'all hear that? Circle that word right there. Hate it. Hate it. You hear that? They hate us. They hate the 12 tribes of Israel. These Edomites are nothing but a bunch of haters. They got these hate groups in this country. That's why that white boy dressed up in Kevlar and camouflage uniform, he went up there and killed them Jakes up there in Buffalo, New York. They killed us in Rosewood. They killed the ones in Black Wall Street. You got the documentaries? What about this? They killed us and they lynched us. Mm -hmm. Remember the lynchings in this country? Boy, they had Negroes hanging on trees all through the South. Yeah. And oh. in the other areas of the despoiler, see this, I don't understand, this man hates us with a perpetual hatred. You can never, ever befriend an Edomite in this time once you come in the truth. Right. Don't trust your enemies, man. Sure. That's how they kill black people. They go, come on, boy, let's go in the woods. Make sure you know you hanging on the damn boat. Didn't they hang brothers out there in the woods? You hanging on the damn boat from white folks. They hang us all through the South. And not only that, our brethren, I also tell y'all to get this book, The American Holocaust by David E. Stanton. They killed our people, chopped their hands off. The so-called Christians came. They burned our people. They raped the little women and the little babies that came out and stomped them in the ground. Mm. This is all recorded in biblical history. Let's go to the book of Hosea. Hosea wrote about it. He said these damn bastards are going to come over here, these Spanish people, and they were going to come over here to the Americas and stomp our babies in the ground. Y'all can't forget this. You better know who Esau is, man. That's why these brothers, you get killed out here. You're laying up with these women. You let your guard down. Next thing you know, you're hanging on a rope somewhere. You cannot ever trust your enemy. You're in the land of your enemy. The enemy is all around us. Let's go to Hosea, right? Hosea. Chapter... Let's go to Hosea, right? Chapter 13, verse 15. Listen to this real good, people. It says, Though there be fruitful among the brethren, an east wind shall come. The wind of the Lord shall come up into the wilderness, and a spring shall become dry. When did this happen? In 1492, what did the Gadites, the Puerto Rican brothers, and all the tribes of Israel, what did they see? They looked over there and they saw Columbus coming <clears throat> with his ships. And when his ships was coming, what did they come and do? They came to conquer, to kill, to plunder. They took the Mexicans, they said, Where's the gold? The Mexicans say, over there. And they say, take me to your gold. They didn't come here to bring Christianity mm -hmm. and love and law. Mm -hmm. Amen. And our people have been getting murdered by these people ever since. Here it go right here. Mm -hmm. And it says, he shall spoil the treasure of all pleasant vessels. Samaria shall become desolate. That's when Samaria fell. That's the ten tribes of Israel. They fell in 722 B.C. when the Assyrians came in. They took them to Halah and Havah, according to 2 Kings chapter 17. They got in ships, went through the Euphrates rivers, went around the land of Africa, and came here to the Americas. The so-called Indians of North, Central, and South America and the islands of the sea, you are the lost ten tribes of Israel. That's who y'all are. And we are Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the Negro so-called tribes. We were still over there in the east till we came on the slave ship to join y'all. So from that time to now, we're all in captivity as it is this day. See what it says here? 
And she has rebelled against Yahweh. See, we rebelled against Yahweh as a nation. Mm -hmm. The leaders of this people caused in the earth. The kings of Israel caused us to earth. And the Most High took our kingdom down for this. See? They shall fall by the what? When those Spaniards came here, they chucked your damn hands off. If you didn't tell them where the goal was. What did they do today? They said, come here. You want to work for me? See. Get out there and move 10,000 bricks and I'll give you $2. Mm. Don't mm. they do that? Mm -hmm. They tell you, go over there, put, pick them damn bricks up and I'll give you $5. And we do it. And we come back and the white man says, wait a minute. Now, I got to pay you next week. These people are oppressors. That's right. I got reports of all my brothers talking about these damn jobs and these Edomites, and I tell them, these are the enemies. Enemies. They're going to oppress you, and they're going to oppress your wages. Mm -hmm. This is why we always have fights and civil rights uh, marches all over this damn place. I am a man, and we have these damn rallies out here. Why? Because these damn devils is ruling over us. They hate right. us. Right. And this is talking about all the 12 tribes everywhere. In Brazil, they doing that. What about AI being in reservations? I wonder if Gag, they out there selling uh, in Connex boxes and selling shrimp, lobster, and crab now. And they out there selling cigarettes and drugs. I wonder where they get that garbage from. Because they've been colonialized by the white man and they put them in reservations and took their land and killed them. And now today, our brothers forgot. They go to North American Indians here. Wait, look how dark they are. <laughs> this book is called The West. The West. An illustrated history. Yeah. You see these brown skinned brothers here? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Where are they now? Tribal God. These are our people, the Gadites. Gadites, North American Indians. The people the Navajo and all them brothers out there. Yeah. He said we're going to fall by the sword. Y'all remember wounding me? Brothers froze in the damn snow. Yeah. The white man killed them and took their bodies, like it says in Genesis 49. chapter 49. Yeah, yeah a troop, troop shall, shall overcome, overcome him, him, but he shall overcome in the end. That's how we know the North American Indians are the tribe of God, because of the tribal markets. These warriors were taken down. Yeah. 500 nations were here. Americans. They were taken down by the white man. So they were part of Samaria also. Mm -hmm. So the Gadites ended up on a reservation, ended up dead in the snow, and out there right now, they're in poverty, living on the reservations. So I ask you, are we free? Mm -mm. It's a plight over here. The answer is no. Until we get out of here and get to New Jerusalem, it's going to be spiritual and physical warfare. Build your loins up. Call the elders. Call an assembly. Because the day of the Lord is at hand. See that? And it says, The infants shall be dashed to pieces. Why well, I told y'all about the infants. The American Holocaust by David Stanley. They took your babies. Ask your grandmother and grandfather and the elders in your tribe. They would smash the babies in the ground. They would smash Puerto Rican babies. Panamanians. Tribe of Manessa. Mm -hmm. Ephemites. Gadites. Asha. Uh, uh, not Dolly. All of them. They got smashed into the ground mm -hmm. by the slave master. Samuel. The Spaniards and the French and the British. And they got the nerve to talk about Ukraine? Hell, there was a holocaust right here. The real holocaust right. is the 12 tribes of Israel holocaust. Because those so-called white people ain't Jews. Mm -hmm. Revelations 2, 9 and 3, 9. And whenever you say something about them, they kick you off the head, don't you? Don't they? Don't these devils come on the air and say, who is that? Because of us to join Israel. Get them off the damn air. Mm -hmm. Because they want the line to keep going. And we're going to keep preaching the truth. That's our job until death. See what it says here? And their infants shall be dashed to pieces, and their women, the child, ripped up. Didn't I show y'all that? They took the women 
and they was pregnant and, and smashed the little babies into mm. the ground. This is what our enemies, enemies did to us. And they want us to forget this. Mm. We don't forget anything mm -hmm. and guess who didn't forget it either? The most high didn't forget it. So what is he going to do? Let's go into the Bible. Psalms 137, verse 7. It's first mentioned. Psalms 137, verse 7. Oh, oh. Is the most high a power of judgment and righteousness? Yes, he is. Let's go and see what he said in the Bible. Let's go to Psalms 137, verse um, verse 7 and 9. Psalms 137. This is what Yahweh says in the Bible. Remember these scriptures here. And this says here. Remember, O Yahweh, the children of who? Gabiah. Who's Gabiah? These damn white people. Mm -hmm. Yahweh didn't forget. You may have been appeased and got money in your pack pocket to some appeasement program from the white man, but the most high ain't forget what they did. He said, What? Remember, O Yahweh, the children of Edom, in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it into the foundation thereof. When the Babylonians were taking down the kingdom of Jerusalem, Esau was down there, Hey, take it down! Woo! Get them damn niggas! That's what they said about us. Okay. Oh, daughter of Babylon. Who's the daughter of Babylon? Who's Babylon the Great in Revelation 18? Filled up with hate groups? America. Mm -hmm. Who ought to be what? Destroyed. Destroy. This place is going to be nuked. Nope. And the most high going to get us out of here before it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Happy shall you be that the reward of this I served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dash and die little one that's the song. Galatians 6 and 7. Keep telling y'all, before this new paradise and new Jerusalem get here, it's going to be some reap what you sow in these last days. Okay? It's going to be some reap what you sow in these last days. Let me show you that in uh, Isaiah chapter 11. The Lord said, we're going to lay hands on Edom. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 11, right? <laughs> And it says here, uh, here you go right here, verse 14, but they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west, and they shall spoil them on the east together. They shall lay their hands upon Edom. Now hear that? We going to lay our hands on Edom by the power of the Most High. When the time comes, when the Habashah returns, he says, we're going to lay our hands on Edom, go ahead, as it says here, uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 14, it says what? Our hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them, and the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptians. When the Habashah returns, you tell him all this, look up. When he returns, people, and he gathers the 12 tribes of Israel together again, we're going to put our hands on Esau. Let's go to Ezekiel 35, chapter 35, and uh, 25, rather. Let's go to Ezekiel 25, verse 12. Ezekiel 25, verse 12. That's why you got to know the table of nations. It says this. Thus saith Yahweh, because an Edom has dealt against the house of, of Judah by taking vengeance. Didn't they take vengeance on us when they took us down? Mm -hmm. They took us in captivity, they overdid it, they slaved us, and even until this very day, they done stole our nationality and calling themselves Jews, and still killing us in grocery stores, old people, walking in canes and shooting them down like dogs. Mm -hmm. And I was greatly offended. Yeah, I'm offended at that. Yeah, I'm offended at that. And, re and revenge himself upon them, because that's what they are, a bunch of uh, Avengers. Mm. And revenge. Therefore, thus saith the house, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom, and we cut off man and beast from it, coronavirus, 
nuclear war, internal destruction is coming to this place. And I will make it desolate from teeming and dead in the dance shall fall by the sword. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people who? Israel. Israel. Israel, we're going to touch them when the time comes. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about getting no damn gun. What are we going to have? <laughs> Let's go to Zechariah 12. <laughs> Go to Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 8 says this. And in that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. When Yahweh shall come back here, the Lord is our defense. We don't want no appeasement. We want the whole nation of Edom in chains. We want the Chinese in chains, the Japanese in chains, all nations in chains, like David did. On the ground with their heads toward the ground, supplications, and what? Tribute. And that's what we're going to get from the hand of the Lord. See? And it says here, Zechariah chapter uh, 12, verse 8. And he that is feeble among them, and that day shall be as David. What was David known for? Warfare. David was a warrior. Warrior. So the least man in this world is going to be as David in that day. And we're going to jack their butts up put them in the chains and rape their women mm -hmm. and put their kids under tribute and we had their women dancing in our castle and God. we're going to put them in a dog cage. God. Yeah, they love dogs and they're going to entertain us. Yeah, God. that's what we're going to do to them. And it says, Be as David, and the house of David shall be as Yahweh and the angel of the Lord before them. See that? And it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, a day of judgment, that I will seek to destroy all nations that, that came up against Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So what power y'all dealing with, people? You dealing with that damn church God? That's enough to win. He ain't going to get them back for what they did. Really? Revelation 15, 9 and 10 <laughs> says, He that lead up into captivity, go in captivity. He that killed with the sword, <laughs> must be killed with the sword. That's what we're waiting for, people. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12. This is what the Lord is bringing. Turn you to the stronghold, people, you prisoners of hope. Even this day I declare unto you, and I will render double unto you. When I have baked Judah for me and filled a bowl with Ephraim, because we're going to bring our people together again, and raise up thy sons, O Zion, mm -hmm. against the sons, O oh, Greeks, and make thee a sword of a mighty man. Mighty man. <laughs> I know y'all can't believe that this is going to happen. Right. But through the power of Yahweh Bashamah Shah and those angels, we're going to take this man down. See what it right. says here? And it says here, And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as a lightning. And the Lord shall blow the trumpet, and shall go with his whirlwinds from the south. What we telling y'all that? <laughs> the ships will kind of come. The devil the third world falls coming. The Hawashah is going to pick up the army of Israel, and we're going to kick these nations from one end of heaven mm -hmm. to the other. other. That's why the Lord said, Wait ye upon, upon me until, until the day that I raise up to the prey. For hmm. my determination is to gather the nations to bring upon them the judgment to wait on your Hawabah Shemah the king of heaven and earth because the day is coming of vengeance and Yahweh said wait ye upon me because what we're going to do to them is going to be their worst nightmare they gonna, they're not even going to understand what's going to be going on but this is what the Lord said that Israel is going to do to these heathens and they all going in slavery. Sweet. And as it says in Isaiah 14, we shall take them captives whose captives we were. And we shall rule over our oppressors. That's judgment. That's power. That's justice. Because the Most High is a power of justice. He's a power of judgment. Mm -hmm. And he's a power of mercy. And he said, Isaiah 14, he shall have mercy on Jacob and yet choose Israel. So brothers and sisters, the remnant of Israel, the scattered abroad, the Most High says in the Bible, Shalom, 
Shalom, la ra, la, meaning peace be unto you. In the name of Yahweh Bashem Hashem, we bring you this counsel in this Bible and hope. So in the last days, you know what time it is, right? It's you. In the name of Yahweh Bashem Hashem, we bring you this counsel in this Bible and hope. So in the last days, you know what time it is, right? It's time for you that don't know the Lord to seek the Lord and come to his counsel. Because in these last days, the judgment is coming and the righteous going to be saved and the wicked shall ban over. Shalom, brothers and sisters, we are scattered abroad. Peace be on you. Shalom.